Have you ever been slapped around by Navy so hard in a game that she made you cry, scream, and rage quit in some cases? Have you been inspired by EVs such as Uber Spidey and Fisheko, but at the end, when you play her, you end up Eve sucking harder than even Cersei's convergence? Eevee is one of the best waifus in the game in my opinion, but no one ever plays her at all and she gets no skins for that reason, which is extremely sad when you consider Lian getting that many skins. Due to the aspect of her being one of the most difficult champions in the realm to play, I bring you a guide, a sequel to my original Eevee guide that I made months ago. In this video, I hopefully will be able to give you all the knowledge I have for Eevee to raise your flank play as well as your Eevee play up to the next level so that you can start dominating people in your games. This this part of the guide will be first covering the mechanics of Eevee, being her combos and unique aspects of her kit, and in the further part of the guide, I will be covering the game sense aspect of her. So without further ado, let's get into the first part of the video. So first let's begin with the mechanics. So this is an in-depth guide. I will be going over every aspect of her kit and I will mainly focus on the wormhole legendary in general as it is the most competitively viable legendary. While I believe over the moon and snow globe are good but at higher levels of play without wormhole it is generally throwing because, you, because of how squishy Eevee is. Firstly let's go over the flashy stuff being Eevee's blink combos as we see most EVs do. Combo number one being the shoot, blink, shoot, soar, shoot, blink, back combo. Yes, I know it's a mouthful, but don't worry, this combo is just about a standard combo for the EV wormhole playstyle. But there's a lot of decision making involved in making this combo viable and to make it very effective. Make sure that you have a mental note that EV always, and I mean always, runs on a, a timer whenever you play wormhole. When you perform this combo, you have to make sure your initial blink back position is at a safe spot away from enemy lines of sight. If you perform this combo and are not able to get a kill, you can still get out due to wormhole. But if you are face to face with your target and you perform this combo, chances are that you are most certain to die as you do not have your sword available as you used it offensively and now you have no way of retreating. But this can be remedied with the card that reduces your sword cooldowns after you get an elimination. But Using that card also hinders your uh, hinders the other parts of your build, so keep that in mind. The soar shoot ice block shoot or the ice block shoot bling back combo. This is an important tech for Eevee to learn as it may end up saving your life in a lot of situations. When you enter ice block and hold your left mouse button and you exit ice block you immediately shoot at the first frame. Of your ice block this is a very important tech as this can catch your enemies off guard as it is almost unreactable of when and how you're going to shoot the sword shoot ice block combo is done so you dive into multiple enemies to get a killing blow after a blink you have a window to bait out enemy cooldowns as reactively they will try and shoot you and use their abilities to stop you i will talk more about ability cooldown baiting in the game sense section of this video but as far as performing the combo it is pretty straightforward as the last combo but use your ice block to make a landing to allow a safer blink back or you can pull off the insta ice block shot before blinking back this needs to be done reactively as i said before you are on a four, four second timer so decisions need to be done on the fly if you do make a mistake you may just end up dying and contemplating and considering what have you done in your life and all of your life decisions as well. So anyways, a quick overview of why we soar after blink. It is done to 1. Get a better view of the battlefield so you know where the target is so you can focus focus on the next target after taking the initial shot or focus on the same target. Second, it allows us to position ourselves better after a blink. 
uh, so we can make full use of our wormhole duration and third well it just makes it look more flashy nothing else next let's go over her ultimate usage and how it is how actually it can be used her ultimate is omnidirectional okay okay hold your horses don't worry about it it's not as complicated as you may think but it is very simple her ultimate actually travels in the direction you are facing this is a very powerful tech to learn as when you are using Eevee's ultimate, you can actually use it to completely block off tanks from reaching the objective as they will, for one, be slowed and also be crippled, stopping them from using their movement abilities and will not be able to get on point. Other than that, the ult is, all, uh, as you know, the ult is omnidirectional. You can hit people above ledges by letting the ult fly up completely, denying high ground control or preventing strafe peeking. So your backline DPS can get an easy kill. Even if your backline DPS is as boosted as this guy, he can still net kills if you set it up properly for him. You can also stop certain channeling abilities being Drogos' Warm Jets, Ash Shoulder Bash, Genos F, etc. So any sort of movement ability can be stopped. This is useful as most movement abilities have certain card effects that make the champion more beefy and hard to kill like Barrack's Bowling Ball and using the ult will completely shut him down. Ice Block Ice Block is one of the highest skill cap abilities of EV's get even over Blink and Soar in my opinion because it has the potential of being the most overpowered of ability in the game in the right hands. What most EVs do in Ice Lock is just hold out the entire duration praying for backup which may not even come honestly. You should use it to bait out enemy cooldowns and shots as well. You saw in the intro clip how I predicted the sniper shot coming out from Strix even when he was invisible. Yes, there is some luck involved when you, but you can minimize the luck through the tool the game gives you. Firstly, make sure you tune your ears to the weapon sounds. This mainly applies to projectiles as you have time to react to them. At medium distances, you can block attacks and combos from enemies if you are always aware of the sounds. For example, the impulse shoot combo from Cassie, Drogos' fire spit salvo, EV bling shot, even Leon's presence, even be, even though it is hit scan, can it has a charge up time so it can be reacted to. These shots, they have travel time or a unique audio cue. So predictively knowing the enemy position and if you are aware of them taking a shot at you, you can instantly react with Ice Block to block the incoming source of damage, forcing them to one waste their cooldowns on you, making them more weaker and more susceptible to your team. For hit scans, it is a lot more difficult that EV is much more squishy and a lot more in danger to sustain damage coming out of Ice Block. So for this for this reason, just clap your hands together and pray that your team will help you. But considering how Paladin's is, I don't think you're ever gonna get help. So just get out your ice block and just die so you don't stagger yourself. Remember, never try and stay the full duration of ice block if you cannot give proper line of sight to your healer. Don't expect the healer to run to you just to heal you and you only. So if you're in a situation where you are uh, where you bought it your wormhole timing, try to wait out the cooldowns of your abilities and ice blocks so you may get a chance of escaping if your enemies mistime their shots on you when you are coming out of ice block allowing you to blink away to safety or even kill them in which case they will rage so hard that well you know the rest also remember to change your timings when timings of your ice blocks when you come out of ice block so you are very unpredictable how to properly juke with soar instead of spinning your mouse around like a madman on steroids you should add random effective motion when you soar instead of just throwing your mouse from one side of your mouse pad to the next the most commonly used technique is circle soaring which allows you to both see the battlefield and make you a harder target to hit. When it comes to training your aim, this is how I do it in the shooting range as a warm up before I play EV in my ranked games or casual games. Doing these drills for about 10 to 15 minutes really helps with in the long run and helps build that muscle memory and helps warm you up. So please sit back and enjoy the drills that I do and here we go. Bonus mechanic for EV. A bonus mechanic for EV would be that you can bunny hop across the map as you carry momentum when you shoot at your feet. This works best when you're going down a slope, of course, but if you use your sword to gain momentum, 
and use your weapon shots in perfect sync before you land you can continue to bunny hop forward carrying momentum this can be used to close out chases a lot faster and get closer to your target a bit more quickly to perform this bunny hop technique you need to perfectly sync your jumps to your weapon shots to gain momentum while doing 180 flick backwards to push yourself forward but do not rely on this too much as it may just end up getting you killed more often than not all right now that you know how to do all of these flashy combos and are practicing you are probably getting solo ulted quite often so let's get into how to use proper game sense to outplay these haters who just love to solo ult you because of how much of a pest you are being for this section i was also got help from cs resident ev pro being knife and a pml pro player and a friend of mine toe to help out with some of the more advanced knowledge and tips including my own so firstly let's go over map knowledge map knowledge matters a lot and you need to have it in mind when you make decisions related to blink and sword you should not be in a situation where you waste your blink trying to get to a position like a high ground but fall short because the distance is too long eevee is a character that performs very well on high ground and you should always try and shoot down on your enemies as much as you can this is another reason why you need to know the map because you want to try and get high ground as soon as possible so anyways for me the best maps in my opinion for EV are serpent beach bright marsh and frog isle the worst maps for EV, in my opinion are shadow desert warders gate fish market and jaguar falls so other maps are pretty good for EV. But honestly, other flanks are better in general on those maps. So let's talk about Serpent Beach, which, which in my opinion is hands down the best map for Eevee. So I'm here to show you some less known flank routes and tricks for this certain map. So let's begin. When, it co when you are coming out of spawn and you're going to push the left hand side, instead of following your team, go straight to your own high ground and on your mount and stand at this angle. From here you have a full view of the enemy doorway so let's say that you are holding this angle for about 6 seconds waiting for the flank rotation. If the flank is rotating you can immediately take a blink shot from, have, from your high ground at a very safe angle and this will 1. Disorientate the enemy making them think where the hell did the EV shoot me from and it will cause them to do 1. Make them rush you or 2. Retreat entirely. If they do rush you then they're like sitting ducks without any movement abilities while EV, while as EV you're on your own high ground with team support on your left side so you are completely safe in this angle and this will either one disorientate the enemy making them think where the hell did the EV shoot me from and it will cause them to do two or more two things one for or make them rush you or two retreat entirely if they do rush you then they're like sitting ducks without any movement abilities while EV, while as EV you're on your own high ground with team support on your left side so you are completely safe in this angle and this will either one kill the flank entirely or force him to waste so much time on you that he can't do anything to your team. And let's say that there is no flank rotation then you can immediately get on their high ground through the certain rollout that I show you here and you can just rain hell into their back lines. so yeah easy as that so anyways ev is always and i mean always 60 percent map knowledge and only 40 percent aim so get to studying maps next let's talk about when you can't dive your enemy let's say the enemy back line is very well fortified and you cannot dive the healers at all what do you do in those situations so in those games where you can't dive flank as EV, you should start by doing damage to tanks. EV is one of the best best tank pokers in the game and also has a very high ultimate charge rate. You can force tanks cooldowns and build a lot of ult charge in the first few seconds of the team fight. It also acts as a harassment for tanks because of the crossfire between you and your team. During this time, you can pay careful attention because you're waiting for a chance to attack the enemy backline. Keep looking for opportunities like the enemy backliners being in a bad position or being vulnerable and ready and be ready to dive them. If possible, be aware of audio cues of important enemy cooldowns that would be a problem for you. If you try to fight them, for example, a Cassie Blast Shot, Leon Auto Aims, or her presence, or even a BK Poppy Bomb, use one of those abilities, then they're gonna be very vulnerable when you attack them. Also be aware of what you're do what your team is doing. 
If your team get an enemy low, it's your job to finish that kill. And lastly, remember that Eevee is a champion that can harass the enemy just by being alive. While poking tanks, you can still do wormhole blink, uh, blink shots on the back lines to harass them. Often this will force them to press a panic button, like use their movement abilities or waste one of their cooldowns. So above all, focus on staying alive unless a certain kill is really worth trading your life for. For example, if the healer is low and if you can dive them and finish them off while trading your own life even at certain moments, it will be worth it. Always, and I mean always, make sure that you are thinking of a game plan during your downtime. It is very important that you never sit idle as e Let's say if you are reloading, you can just think about your next assault on your uh, assault on your enemy or do poke damage from an angle while you are waiting out your cooldowns. Even reloading as EV is a waste of time. So either remember using a an reload animation cancel can cut the downtime. This will cut down your time just a tiny bit but that tiny bit may be game changing. Also again, remember that you aren't made to get kills but to create space instead. So please do remember that instead of hard focusing on damage and damage alone on a full HP target, chase a lower HP target or a squishy target to force them out of the fight for longer to give your team more space to work with. So for me personally, I like to play super uh, not in a sense passive, but kind of in a sense passive, where it's blink one shot, blink back. You always want to bait out and switch up the angles that you're attacking from. You constantly want to change up what you want to do in order to throw the other team off so they can't predict where you're going to be and burst you as much. Realistically, it's all about priority targets. If you, if you have an opportunity to shoot the back line and still be safe, go for it. I always go for the most important target. But if your team needs to focus, or if you have nothing else to shoot at, or you can't dive the back line without being in danger, shooting at tanks is a perfectly fine thing to do, especially when you have cauterized at a high level and they can't just steal right back up. You always want to blink before you're about to take the burst damage. Taking a few shots from someone would be okay. So if you were to take a few shots from, say, a victor, whatever, you're going to heal it right back up anyway. Um, but you never want to put yourself in a situation where there's a possibility of you dying. Because once you die, the entire pressure of Eevee and the entire point of Eevee goes away. And with that, the Eevee guide comes to a close. Thank you all for watching the video and thank you again for the 300 subscribers. This is a huge goal for me and thus I made this guide for you all. Hope you all enjoyed the guide and of course thank you Toe and Knife for helping him, helping me out with the game sense section and also all of my clan mates and friends who spent quite a while getting all of these clips together in customs and of course other games. So please do check out Knife's channel, uh, Knife's channel and Toe's Twitch and also give him a follow on Twitter as well. Again, if you guys want to help me with the stuff in the videos, please do join my server and also remember to stay tuned to the announcements for when I stream and such. So please do leave a like and a subscribe and I hope you all are having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Emily, help and keep my sanity no matter what I do. I know they'll always stand for me.